The implication of the language the uh, Prime Minister used today was that Dominic Cummings was a fantasist, but he was careful not to actually use that term, not to provoke. It looks as though the intention is very much to try to de-escalate this row and very much to move on. In all his answers, the Prime Minister uh, today, in the short interview that he gave for all broadcasters, uh, tried to pivot away uh, from uh, the Dominic Cummings allegations and to talk about vaccines and the variant. As for Matt Hancock, as you suggested there, uh, Christian, he was uh, struggling, he said, my recollection is that I didn't say what Dominic Cummings uh, said. It wasn't the most compelling uh, rebuttal that you'd ever heard. As for Dominic Cummings himself, he fell silent today, perhaps drawing breath after yesterday. Quite a few MPs noticed that he said he was quite happy in future, if people were interested, to talk about other subjects that he'd observed in Number 10 beyond Covid. And I think quite a few select committees are sniffing around that offer. There is no plan. We're in huge trouble. The whole core of government fundamentally fell apart. Absolutely um, catastrophic mistake. After the tirade, the headlines. Some took aim at Dominic Cummings himself. Most turned their fire on his targets. And Dominic Cummings knows how much one of them will have poured over these front pages. The Prime Minister already is about 1,000 times far too obsessed with the media mm -hmm. in a way which undermined him doing his own job. It's your birthday today. Yeah. Really happy return. The Prime Minister in Colchester today knew he had to respond to the attacks from the man he'd begged to work with him. He restricted himself to one brief interview recorded for all broadcasters. Dominic Cummings says that you are not the right person to be leading the country at this time. Can you tell people why is he wrong? I think that it's important for us to focus on what really matters to the people in this country. And I think, if I may say so, that uh, some of the, the commentary I've heard uh, doesn't bear any relation to reality. A calibrated answer intended to push back without provoking even more verbal assaults from the top aide who became his top enemy. The Health Secretary, singled out for special harm in Dominic Cummings' testimony yesterday, was asked about the allegation he'd lied when he promised the Prime Minister patients being moved into care homes would be tested. Did you tell the Prime Minister that everyone going from hospital to care home would be tested, or is Dominic Cummings not telling the truth on that? Of course we committed, and I committed, to getting the policy in place but it took time to build the testing. Did you make the statement in March that they would be tested before going back to care homes and that didn't turn out to be true because you didn't have the testing system in place? Is that what really happened? No, uh, look, there'll, there'll, there'll be a time when we go back over all this in great detail, but my recollection of events is that I committed to delivering that at testing for people going from hospital into care homes when we could do it. I then went away and built the testing capacity for all sorts of reasons and all sorts of uses, including this one. With an inquiry not starting until next year, the Health Secretary can expect to be pressed for clarity on that recollection a lot sooner. One who worked alongside Dominic Cummings for four years says the focus on Matt Hancock has several origins. They worked together briefly in 2013 when Cummings was in the, the DfE and, and Matt Hancock was the skills minister. And I think at the time he thought... He thought Matt Hancock was a joke. He's never had much time for him. Um, and of course, Matt Hancock is the only senior cabinet minister who was a Remainer and was on the other side of the uh, referendum to, to Dominic. Um, but it almost felt like he was using him as a, as a bit of a convenient scapegoat to pin everything on so that he could protect some other figures in cabinet who he has sort of some more personal interest in, obviously Michael Gove, who, who we both worked for, but also Rishi Sunak, who he, he essentially placed in the role of chancellor. In Dudley, signs that the public has not turned against the government, despite the all-out attack from one who was at the heart of it. I think what did come across, because um, I did listen to quite a bit of it, was the total chaos. No, no one knew what to do in um, number 10. And I think people had to make very difficult decisions with science that wasn't sure either. Could they have done, be could they have done better? I think they could have done better but the science probably wore there at the time. Do I want a, a Prime Minister who's a wonderful, trustworthy, honest person? I want somebody that actually does it and gets it done. Yeah. Labour said the government must not be allowed to work to its own lengthy timetable, 
providing definitive answers to Dominic Cummings' allegations. It's Hobson's choice, isn't it? We've got Dominic Cummings on one hand and the Prime Minister on the other. And I don't think Dominic Cummings should have the last word on this. That's why all the evidence should be put before the committee. The Health Secretary should answer the allegations and the inquiry should be fast-forwarded. After yesterday's outpourings, Dominic Cummings fell silent today. But number 10 will be wondering for how much longer.